Hi there, Mr. Automation is back and today with some PowerShell again, of course. And uh, this time how to reboot lots of Windows system at once and keep track of the status as well. Uh, I got this request from a viewer, so uh, I created a little script for that and the video belonging to that script with some explanation on the code. So we have an agenda for today. It will be a short video. We are going to reboot some Windows systems here. We're going to keep track of the failures and the successes as well. We do them all at once. So we're not going to do one and wait for it and then another one. So there is some multi-threading involved. Uh, there are several ways of rebooting uh, a Windows system. This demo is using Windows remoting. So we're reaching out remotely to that system and then triggering a reboot. Uh, but you can do it via the virtual layer as well. Avatar is a virtual machine, for instance, you can use VMware PowerCli. I've done a lot of programming on that. You can uh, restart machines with that. And you can do it with Hyper-V as well. And uh, you can do it in Azure and uh, AWS as well, of course. You can do it on Xen Server, uh, just some examples. But uh, this time we do it via the Windows remoting capabilities. And I'll show you in a minute in the drawing how that works a little bit. Uh, we are using PowerShell jobs for the multi-threading part, We're using a custom object to return the results from the job. So we have some information back uh, when the script finalizes. Uh, we are going to write information about the reboot to a log file as well. That was a request of the user. So then we can see which one succeeded and which one failed. And we're going to analyze the output data as well in the grid view. It's more a graphical approach instead of a log file. And we do an overview of the environment used for this demo uh, and whatever pops up. So uh, let me start by giving an overview of this environment. So I'm sitting here on this work group PC. This is my gaming PC. I use that for everything, also for, for some coding. I'm sitting here and I will use uh, WinRM. That's a remoting protocol that uses TCP port. Uh, these ones are used. And uh, I have a couple of systems, actually more than four. I think I have six or seven even up and running. Those are all domain joint systems. And I'm here sitting in on a work group. So I need some uh, credentials here, credentials. On this PC to reach out to those systems and actually uh, uh, run the restart commando from an operating system perspective. This is my hypervisor. This is a physical machine that's sitting there for a couple of servers there. And some storage as well uh, that's, that's behind it there's all, a lot of storage behind that and uh, they, those are physical boxes and these are virtual machines sitting on those uh, physical boxes okay a lot of talking let's go to the demo and explain some code and we're going to run it as well of course but first we're going to explain the code and uh, first i go back to this drawing i have a couple of servers here up and running i will show that I, I have a script here, it's not very interesting, but this deploys a lot of virtual machines and then I can use them. So I deployed uh, test 500 until 506. So those are seven servers to play with. And those are all Windows, uh, I think it's 2019. I choose that as an operating system. And those are all the main joint as you can see here. Okay. So that is the setup. Um, yeah. So explain the code. Yeah, we go back to the demo. I'll size this up. I run the code with the debugger enabled. Then I explain it line by line what's happening. Um, so I'll start the script now. And let me do it full. So I start the script with F5 and now we have a debugging. I press F10 to go to the next line. And then basically what you do here on the first line is set the current working directory. So I dynamically go uh, to this folder, so to speak. And inside of that folder, we do it on the next line. We get the content of a servers.txt file. That's this file. We have some servers in there. I showed you them already in my cluster manager. Those servers are going to play with that. And then uh, the next line, I press F10. We need to provide some credentials. Remember to reach out to those machines. If you already logged on to your system and you can remote uh, to the servers, you don't need to provide credentials, of course, but I need to do that. So this is my uh, domain admin account. And now we have in this domain creds, you see, we have a username and password of secure string there. And we can provide that later in the script to some command lines or a function, actually. And I'll 
I'll show that in a second. What we do here is we start a loop for each computer in computers. Computers, we got that here, right? That is that list of that seven servers. So for each computer in computers, we go next. Then we write some output to the screen so that we're starting a reboot on one of the computers. You see that here now starting a reboot on test 500. And as you can see now, there's nothing happening yet, of course. I'll show that. You see, nothing happening here yet. On the next line, and uh, that's quite important, we do a start job. And that's the multi-threading part. And that start job is calling a function. Uh, I'll show that function in a second. There's this function on top. And it accepts some arguments, this function. And it accepts two arguments, a computer name and some credentials. And uh, now we go to that function. Close the left side. Explain that a little bit. So when we start this job, this function gets called with some input, computer name and credentials. I showed that, right? We're providing that here as an argument list. And those ones, we have that here, computers and domain, and domain credentials, and we provide them here to this function. And inside of this function, we do a restart of the computer, right? Of that computer we have now in the loop. We use those credentials we provided. We specify the computer on which we want to remotely execute that. We do a wait, so we wait for the process to finish. We do a force, so if any, anyone is logged on or anything, it just forces a reboot. And the error action is stop. And what that means is that if there is an error on the restart computer, we have here a try catch block. And whenever you facing an error on a command line or anything else, .NET utility as well, then you uh, come in a sketch block. In the sketch blocks, we can then catch the specific error. So here is a success, right? Because we never get in that catch block. And here then we have like uh, a failed situation. We're going to simulate that failed situation as well today. And then on line 20, we return this property object we just created. We create here an ordered hash table. And from that hash table, we can create an object. And we do that here, new object, PS object, and then we pro provide some properties. And that's a an hash table here, specifically ordered. Okay, close this function. So basically, that, that's what's happening inside of this function. And then we return this back. And to who do we return that? To this job, start job is, is calling that. And uh, that gets a return. And jobs are stored in memory, so to speak. So when we run this now, and I will do that, you'll see that the first system uh, will get a job to, uh, to reboot. And I will go to this line, and I will continue the script. And then we perhaps even can see that the server, you see, this one is already down. You see, that one is down. And perhaps take the last one here. Perhaps we are on time. No, I think it's already Everything is it's quite quick. We can do it again. Oh, this one perhaps. Yeah, this one is also still booting. Yeah, and it's now done. So uh, that part actually worked. So we now rebooted to a lot of systems. And now you want to keep track of the status of those reboots. And then we do that in the next couple of lines. Basically what we're doing here is checking the jobs. I'll show that. And there's no running jobs currently. So basically that means that everything is already completed. We sort of already see that. Uh, then on line 38, we create a variable for a log file. And again, that goes in the current working directory and a prefix of reboot. And then we provide the current date in a specific format and append a log extension there. Okay. And that is how the log file then looks. See that with a nice date inside of it. I'll show that here. See, it's a current working directory. We get a nice reboot file of each time that the script runs. It creates a new log file. And what we do here is basically inside of end result, we get now all the jobs. So the jobs are still running, and I will sh I will show that or not running, but they are still in memory. I'll show that get job. And now what you can see is that we have a, a bunch of jobs here, right? Those are all completed now. And the, those jobs got started from our script here. Okay? And what we can do now is uh, receive all those jobs and put them in a variable. And we do that now. And that can take some time. So we will be patient. You see that? You see, we'll see some uh, stuff popping up on the screen because that was probably still in memory, so to speak. And so now inside of end result, we actually have some results of what happened and if it failed or not. So what we can do now is basically we still have those jobs here. I'll show that. 
what we do here is remove all those jobs because we are done with them and they have no more data you see that has more data equals false and before it was has more data was true because we now collected the data here with the received job and we put it inside of this end result variable okay and what we do then we can remove all the jobs so we do that now and if we now do a get job we have no jobs left okay what we do here is the end result we pipe it to a grid view so we have some graphical user interface to inspect the uh, end result so we do that now and i'll show that and this is a grid view <coughs> and in this grid view i'll size that up you can see which name those are the server names we have in our text file and the result they all succeeded in the reboot okay that's that's fine i guess so i close this and what we do then on the next following uh, uh, three lines we basically loop through all the end results and write the name and the result so if it failed or not to that log file so you have something uh, concrete so to speak not in memory but really a uh, log file perhaps get some history from that what you can do here so we do that now and i'll show you the first line when it's written to the log file so now we have a re reboot with the current date here and you see already the first entry is there and now i will continue the script with f5 so everything gets written to the file and if you now open this log file you have the same results that you saw on uh, this grid view name result and we have that here as well so here we have some logging about logging about uh, the reboot okay now imagine uh, let's go to the demo uh, we run the code now we're going to sabotage the server right so let's go to my cluster manager and uh, how to how do I sabotage the server? I just shut down this VM, or even I save it. I'll, I'll click save here. So then it's not online anymore. Of course, you cannot reach it. Uh, so we should get a failure here. So now we sabotage the server, server, and we run the code again. And let's see. I close this. Go to here, and I run the whole code without any debugging now because I did explain how the code works. So that part is done and let's close this site as well so we have some real estate to work with and uh yeah run the script and i'll press f5 now and apart from that i'm doing nothing ex uh, except providing credentials here hang on and then i do nothing of course my hands are free and i'll show you the cluster manager here we just open this uh see this one is already rebooting you see that and the other ones as well of course but we have one that should fail now because we sabotaged uh, our uh, current setup right we switched machine in a safe state um so let's wait a little bit and uh, here you have some progression so what we see here there are still we are waiting for several seven reboots and that's that is this while loop this while loop is checking for the jobs which are still running and when they are still running we write something to the screen that you see here, the current count, it's now six, we're waiting for six of them. And, and then we sleep for 10 seconds and then the loop starts again, the loop starts again until there's no running jobs anymore. And then we get the job result that's happening now in the background. We stick that inside of that end result and we pipe that to the screen. And let's see. And now all of a sudden we have one failure. This test 503 that failed, and why did it fail? It failed the computer, test 503 is skipped, failed to retrieve his last boot of time, but of the RPC servers unavailable. Yeah, that makes sense because uh, the server's down, right? So uh, that, that was an error. And let's go to the log file as well, belonging to this run, and you will see the same information in the log file. So this one was okay, this one was okay, this one, and this one failed with the same message that you saw inside of the grid view. Okay. Let's um, close this. Let's start this one again. And let's switch off this one now. And uh, 505. I just do some random stuff here. Let's switch those off. And we run it once more the script. And let's see if we get those two failures. And the other ones should all succeed, of course. So let's see if we can, um, can accomplish that. Um, so here we run the code again and uh, for this time I will comment out the domain credentials because I have them already in memory 
so it makes no sense to provide them over and over again. I will delete these old log files, by the way. It makes no sense for me to save them. Exactly. And inside of our service, we still have that. Yeah. Okay. So now we run the script and let's clear the screen as well. Make it a little bit more neat. And now we're starting the reboot again. And uh, of course, we can look at the reboots here, but you trust me now. It's, they will go down and up again. And some will fail. Uh, specifically, two should fail now. So let's wait a little bit. We're still waiting on seven reboots now. Five reboots now. We're still waiting for five reboots. Ten seconds again. Now we get some results back here. And there we have it. And I will size this up. So now the 501 and the 505 failed uh, because it could not get some information because the RPC server is available. That's correct because the server was switched off. We simulated that the network is unavailable, right? And uh, we catch that error nicely here. And if we now go to this newly created log file as well, that belongs to this uh, run, then you will see that it failed again. And just for the sake of the demo, run it once more with the same configuration and we should get exactly the same output, of course. Two should fail again. And now that I will pause it now. Oh, there we get our results back from the jobs. Let's see what we have. There we have it again, 501 sized up. You believe me now, I guess 501 and 505 failed. Because those were skipped uh, with an error. And uh, if I now open the latest log file, we, we have those two errors again, of course, those failures. Let's, for the last time, switch this, these two on and run it once more. So now we have all the servers up again, and now everything should uh, succeed. I don't know if I'm too quick, by the way. I just booted them up, so but I think it should be fine. It's quite quick, this environment, so I think we should be fine there. I will pause the video again. And there we have our results. Let's see. Everything succeeded there. And if we now go to our latest log file, everything succeeded. So let me go back to the demo. Yeah, I explained the code. I run the code. I sabotage some servers. We run the code again. Everything works fine. And that makes me come to this end. And thank you very much for watching. This was Mr. Automation. And I'll see you in one of my next videos.